Good afternoon. On behalf of the Evergreen Communities Outreach Committee, I'd like to welcome you to the day three last session of the day for the Evergreen International Online Conference. We would like to thank Mobius for sponsoring Track 1 today and Equinox Open Library Initiative for sponsoring the closed captioning for the conference. Also a big thank you to Karen, who is our closed captioner today. If you are not familiar with Zoom's webinar controls, please take a moment to acquaint yourself with them. Feel free to use Q&A or chat for questions or use the raise hand button to be called on to speak. The chat is also a good place to make comments and interact with other attendees. Do make sure that your drop down uh, in the chat window says all panelists and attendees, otherwise you'll just be messaging the panelists. This session is being recorded and the recording will be available on the Evergreen Project's YouTube channel uh, sometime after the conference. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Andrea Bunsnyman and Ruth Frazier to talk about, but wait, there's more, new feature highlights for 3.4 and 3.5. Take it away. I'm going to grab the screen now. All right, can you see my gray title slide there? Yes. yes. All right. So thank you for joining us, everyone, for this last session. Um, Ruth and I are going to go over the new features in 3.4 and 3.5, as the slide says. Um, a couple of these were talked about this morning at the uh, development update. So there might be a little bit of repeated content, but there's also you know a bunch of excellent new screenshots as well. So without sure. further ado. Um, these are the features that we're going to be uh, speaking about uh, over the next few slides. So we've I've got linked the release notes and full documentation for 3.4 and because 3.5 is still uh, pending, the release notes are also pending, although I think they were just technically finished yesterday, but they're not linked on this slide. I will go back and link them. Um, so we're going to start with 3.4, which was released uh, last October. Ruth, take it away. Absolutely. So I'm kind of well, I'm 100% hands-free right now, so I'm just going to be looking at what Andrea is serving up to me and, and telling you about it. This was a really good opportunity for me coming back into Evergreen after about a year and a half hiatus when there was a lot of development work that's done. And then also half of my job deals with Evergreen Indiana, and we are running 3.2. And so to be asked by Andrea to look at the new features for 3.4 and 3.5 was, I don't, I don't know that a steep learning curve is the right characterization, but I definitely spent a lot of time going through a lot of things. A profound learning opportunity. It was a profound learning opportunity, yes. Yeah. So the first thing that we're going to look at is something that a uh, those of you who are doing server admin are will have an opportunity in three four to use and that is the remote patron authentication jeff davis with the bc libraries co-op uh, built these interfaces and you can see in in the live slides when you have access to those you'll be able to link to the launch pad ticket for for that and read through all the comments there and then there is also a related feature that has to do with um, LDAP and there, there is documentation for that, which you can link into pretty easily from there. I had all these windows open like now, nah, we're not gonna worry about it. So uh, Andrea, if you can go to the next slide, we can actually see a couple of, well, the first interface that he created is the record editor and this is to configure that, um, that remote authenticator in here and you can create that and it could be anything from an easy proxy to an overdrive. There are so many different third party people that are wanting to get in and authenticate our patrons with the database and so this would be that. So you can set that provider up here and then if you wanna go to the next and then this actually sets up your patron uh, profiles, not your individual patrons, but 
um, who can access what or how what is this authenticator looking for in here so those two interfaces built in the um, angular modal editors are here in the uh, 3.4 server administration menu so we can go ahead to the next slide there so the next thing that I think everybody in the entire Evergreen Frontline staff is going to be excited about is the server managed print templates. As you know, previous to 3.4, this was a workstation dependent thing. And so people were running around with their thumb drives or their flash drives or emailing things to one another or throwing it into a, a Google Drive somewhere and hoping to send the right link and have your permissions this can now be handled, um, well, it's server managed. So it could be, hand, if you're talking about a consortium, it can be handled all the way up to the administrative level and you don't have to worry about all of those different ways that we were sending files back and forth to make sure we had consistent receipt templates or whatever we were pronounced. So thank you to Bill Erickson for that very, wonderful thing that we will be hearing great kudos from our libraries about. Let's go on to the next and I'm seeing in the uh, in the chat lots of yays and so many pluses for yeah. server side. And I have print. to echo that as a former frontline circ person myself, I, I did indeed have a thumb drive with my various print templates. You probably it. still have a thumb drive that I, has old it is templates actually, on it. <laughs> I believe it is literally um right here. Here you go guys. Yes. You there, just there hand it to somebody print here. templates on that thumb drive. I grant yep. you these pre-configured receipt yep. templates. For the library I haven't worked at in four years. Right. But anyway, so the, one of the next uh, features that we're going to talk about for 3.4 was one that we developed at Equinox, and this was funded by a nice broad community partnership, uh, including Evergreen Indiana, CW Mars, King County uh, Library System, uh, MassLink, and the Georgia Public Library Service. And this was part of the larger Angular Acquisitions Project. It was the first part um, of the Angular Acquisitions Project, where um, we did a lot of tools um, and kind of background improvements. And I've listed them um, there to the right, but the only ones that really made for good pictures uh, were the filters. So these are now column filters that are available at the top of Angular grid columns. Um, depending on the column data type, you'll get a text filter or an org unit filter. Um, or um, a date filter, and they all include different kinds of operators, um, different ways you can set those up. Um, the org unit filter, you'll note, also includes the uh, include the plus ancestors, plus descendants that um, is probably already familiar to some of you from some of the newer Angular interfaces. So those are available um, going forward to all post 3.4. Uh, new Angular grids, and um, in addition, there uh, the column headers are now able to um, be made to float. So if you're scrolling down a really long grid, the um, column headers will actually like stop at the top of the screen. So as you're scrolling, you can still see what all of your column headers are. And then there were other um, the other improvements that went with Angular X Sprint Zero or listed there as well, um, a new popover widget, um, improving cross-tab communications, which is if you have multiple tabs open and you make a change in one tab, the other tab will pick up on that change and refresh. Um, and then some improvements to uh, combo boxes and date widgets. So, the next thing, and, and as I was researching the booking module refresh, I was pretty convinced that Jane needed to do an entire session on this. She did some amazing work um, along with Christine. Um, can you remind me Christine's last name? Burns. I know several. Which, which Christine one Burns. It? Christine Burns. Um, Jane from Lynn Benton Community College. Booking has been part of Evergreen for a while, 
but the work that um, that has been done on this really almost makes it a brand new product. Um, so I would encourage those of you who have not even really considered it all to take a look at it. So the first thing, and in here you, you'll be able to see the launch pad uh, ticket, of course, and with all that communication and then the great documentation that's also been created uh, by Jane and probably Christine that has been published to help walk you through how to actually use it. Um, all of the existing interfaces were re redesigned in Angular. And then there's a brand new manage reservation screen that has a lot of functionality added, added into it. And then another really cool feature that wasn't there before, you used to have to delete and then recreate reservations, is now you can actually edit reservations. So yeah. you can access the, um, the interfaces through, of course, the booking menu up in the nav bar. And let's go ahead to the next and, and take a look at a few of those things. So you can see in the create reservations screen that there are um, so many ways that this can be used, whether it's for items or for rooms or for um, really, it, it, it's only limited by, by your imagination, how long you are doing reservation. Another thing that was added in here is um, the, the calendar actually maybe seems like a, a kind of small thing, but isn't. And then if you look over under the reservation details, you'll see that there are the blue and the black, black being what is um, actually active right now, and then blue is gonna link you into some more stuff. There's just a lot of stuff. So let's go ahead and move to the next slide. And you can see then the different things that you can access. There's a pull list if, we, if you are going to be pulling physical things. Um, then how those things are um, actually picked up by the whoever that's picking that up. We call them a patron, but it, it may be different in your organization. And then how to return. Those are all in angularized interfaces that you then have um, records you can select. You have actions that can be applied to that and, and just a variety of uses there. Let's go ahead into the next screen to see more with the booking module. And I'm, I have never used booking. Um, it is, but just going through here, I'm like, this is one of the coolest things that I have ever seen created for Evergreen besides the item status screen, but that's another conversation completely. I gave a whole presentation on that in the, the Raleigh conference about it's, how it's much I best. loved. It was literally like how much Andrea loves the item status. Screen. Right. We, we could talk. But <laughs> this is all about booking right now. Yes. And, and so this is a new screen here, this manage reservation. So um, and, and I feel like all of a sudden I've done it a disservice because there's so much functionality in this screen that has been created. So. Um, I, I'm gonna like it really, you really need to just play with it. You can create from here, you can edit your reservations from here. You can, you can see again, we have these different tabs, filter by patron, filter by resource, filter by resource type. Um, and where are we looking at the reservations? We have the option to, to select our org units. What do we wanna see? Do we wanna see? And we have our whole family structure there. So just a very cool feature that's been added here. Let's go on to the next screen. And um, so the administration of this uh, module is of course just important. It needs to be set up to um, use the front end of it. So all of these have been angularized. They have that um, common editor look to them where you can create or edit your resource types, your attributes for those resources and the actual resources. And there are a lot of um, options in there, some required fields, but then a lot of fields that you can define to accommodate your use case. So just uh, really, this 
is a really robust and complete feature that that they they have developed here. So let's let's go on. All right. Now, cheers, That's cheers forever. to to Jane for that long overdue rewrite and really making the booking module into something so much more uh, useful and user friendly and easy to configure and just prettier. Like the old booking module was dojo still so this is right an improvement on so many friends so so thank you jane for all your there is a question here from Catherine at the consortium level at the consortium level mm -hmm. can libraries see if an item has been booked already and therefore unavailable Ooh, um, that's a good question i don't, I don't know the, answer, know to the answer to that i'm going to go out on a limb and say that if it's configured in that manner the answer is yes yeah, it would uh, it depends. There's view per there's view bookings permissions, right. and you would have to have the correct permissions at the correct locations to be able to see that. So. It, it is it is possible, um, but it may not be permissible in your library. Mm -hmm. And then there is a note from Jeff: um, usable for curbside pickup slots. Yeah, like that would actually, I can I mean, totally see how you can hack booking into into curbside. Yeah, um, that that's I that had not occurred to me. It but had not occurred to me until you just said it, and that is just a really cool great marks idea. For creativity, yeah. Yep. <laughs> the things that we can do with Evergreen are amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Limited only by your imagination, yes. <laughs> right? And your policy. <laughs> no, you're you're right, um, Jay. The current one doesn't seem so user friendly, and that's that's kind of where as I was looking at it, I had looked at booking before. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's nice. It's kind of like looking at the dojo of acquisitions. Um, and like, I see how that would work, but then to see it rewritten in such a, a more user-friendly way, obviously I'm way too excited about it right now. So. Yeah. All right. Next feature. So, um, this one is uh, was sponsored by Pales, um, and this is sort of a, a reboot of a feature that existed. There was um, some custom scripts originally by uh, Mobius that allowed book uh, certain uh, buckets to display as as carousels, and then there are a couple different uh, automated things that you could do with them. So Pales wanted um, more flexibility with how to deploy carousels than what the current scripts provided. So uh, they contracted with Equinox to uh, reimagine the carousels, take the existing uh, feature and make it uh, a more full, fully ingrained evergreen feature. Um, so it's now got its own set of database tables, its own set of um, configuration interfaces in um, the local and server administration menus. Um, you can, still create carousels directly from a record bucket, but it's very like one click. Um, you can also add records. If you're in um, the record view as a staff member, you can add a record um, directly to a carousel from the, the bib record view. And this is just shows you one of the um, administrative interfaces for that. This is the carousels configuration, which will show you who owns the carousel, the name of the carousel, um, the last refresh time and the carousel type. There are um, carousel types which are manual, which means you just they're they're looking directly at a user created bucket. Um, so this is if you wanted to create like a staff picks list, you do it for that. And then there's several automatic um, automatic features as, or automatic carousel options as well, including um, newly cataloged items, recently returned items, and those will create an automatically generated list of, of things that have come back. So this one, the one that I'm showing um, the excerpt of is kittens because I mean, who doesn't want to see the kitten carousel? Um, in case you weren't aware, Gail and Charlton obviously was involved with this work. Um, but the uh, kitten carousel is a, an example of a manual carousel. So. Oh, I didn't even see the gale and select the books for the carousel on the slide. <laughs> no, I actually think that I might have created the kittens carousel in testing. And the reason it made it into that particular screenshot is because it um, had all like good kind of cover display and, and it, it just sort of captured. And shorter titles. Well. Galen says, I, I am pleased to claim telepathic 
influence. Yeah, I probably so it was. probably was you and he was just like saying kittens. Yeah, kittens, we were, kittens. I was channeling Galen when I when I made the kittens care. So so uh any other there's a bunch of things that flew by in the chat. Were there any questions that you no. noticed, Ruth? Other no. than other than the question about Galen and the kittens. No, so like, I feel it like seems that's like as soon as you like mention kittens, it just everybody runs away with it. Doesn't matter yeah. even what session you're in. We all we all know you, Galen. All right, so that brings us, and that's obviously not an exhaustive, exhausted, good Lord, it's the last session. The exhausted last day, list. Like, yeah, <laughs> an, an exhausted Andrea. It's not an exhaustive list of right. uh, three, four features, but those were just some of the more interesting um, ones that we wanted to call your attention to. And now we're going to do the same for three, five. Um, and if you attended the developer update this morning, you heard um, from our co-release managers that they're, um, you know, we did, they did cut three, five beta. Um, and then obviously the entire world blew up um, and the ensuing delay, however, has allowed for a lot more to go into three, five than it would have. So, you know, in this terms of a silver lining, um, I feel I'm feeling pretty good about three five, and I think that they are too. But this is um, forthcoming, so let's see. Um, and the features that we're going to talk about have all been committed. So the feature freeze for this release was, you know, a couple months ago now. So these are all features that you are going to see in three five, despite the fact that it's not um, officially released yet. Onward. So this. Um, is a small thing, but potentially really useful for those of you, especially if you have, um, you want to make sure that, that your systems patrons get those holds first, um, if this is like for political reasons, funding reasons, um, etc. And this was funded by uh, Westchester Library System. And it adds a new uh, option, new weight option to best holds sort order, uh, where which is called traditional withholds chase home lib patrons. Um, it was kind of, we did not have a good name for that, but that is very, it is descriptive to what, what it does. It's the traditional sort weight, but it adds as its primary weight, um, the proximity between the item owning library and the patron home library. So you can see um, in that row two, um, that priority uh, is number one on that waiting list. So that's just a, a new, a new weight that you can use and then a new um, default option to use that if you want to prioritize those items. So this was something that um, Bill talked about actually pretty thoroughly this, this morning in the developers update, but if you weren't in here, this is one of those things that is again going to be very important for frontline staff and also a, a great, um, it's going to relieve a fair amount of consternation. And, and so that if somebody places a hold and then it of course has that, the phone number that is associated with that hold, but then they change it before the hold is fulfilled, it's going to update the hold notification so that they're going to be called at the new number. Um, it's a little thing. Again, this is such a quality of life thing for our our patrons and for our staff. So, and you can you can see the interfaces here. You see the um, the old and and then I think that we do have another screen that shows that after you change that, um, you have this. Uh, little prompt here that says, do you want to update the holds? You don't necessarily have to. Um, and I do think. And it will allow you to individually select if you've select got like multiple, multiple different kinds of notifications and you're yeah. like, oh, I still want notification for this one group of holds to still go to that, you know, notification. But for these others, I want them to be updated. And that's what that, that tick box is there. Um, in the box, there's only one here, so you can't see another one to tick the box. But uh, and then, so you would select that, update the holds, and then you can see that those holds, the notification phone number has been um, updated. From Julia saying, "Yay, Circ Desk will love this." Yes, and anytime either the Circ Desk loves something or the catalogers love something, it 
we know that a true improvement has been yeah. been made to the software. It's a win. Yeah. So this is, um, Bill also talked uh, quite a bit about this uh, earlier today for the Angular staff catalog improvements, but you know, these are different and exciting screenshots about the Angular catalog. And it's, and it's a big change that's coming up. So it's worth like looking at it more than yeah. once for sure. And again, you know, and hopefully the catalogers will love it. And I know that the cataloging working group has um, been, been really involved with um, looking at the, the ongoing changes for the, the new staff catalog and um, giving feedback and have been um, a big part of that. So right. big, big ups to Jennifer Weston and the cataloging working group for that. Um, but this, the uh, previous version of the Angular staff catalog just had a placeholder um, for the enhanced mark editor. You could only see the flat text editor. So this is, as of um, 3.5, this is what the enhanced mark editor uh, will look like. So. Um, it includes everything that you would want to see from a full mark editor, um, which is authority validation, the physical characteristics wizard, um, keyboard shortcuts, and I'll show you some pictures of those over the next couple slides. So this is obviously the help menu. You click the help button and it will show you um, the relevant keyboard shortcuts, which should all look pretty familiar. Fairly I have a question right here. The same. You like this? I'm yeah. gonna. I, I'm gonna. Oh, ask you're gonna ask me a question. question. I was yeah, here. I'm, I'm looking at the chat yeah, window. Like. So the are the the uh, the help things for the flat for the fixed fields are they here yet? Ooh, In three five. A, the well, the create replace oh six oh seven oh eight are there. Is that what you mean? No, I mean that if you if you click on the fixed field and in some of them there are um, helpers that it brings it gives you actually what can populate that the physical characteristics wizard is there which yeah not exactly the same but yeah not the same but okay. still still cool okay. um, the other ones yeah, yeah. I, I you know I actually did not I did not check that when I we're was gonna go in that. after we're out of here and you guys are doing something we'll find a test server and just click things yeah. Oh yeah. No, I think I think my my three five has been reclaimed, so I have oh, to get sorry. that set back. Mm, we'll figure to... it out. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the presentation. Meanwhile, back at the Ruth and Andrea show. Um, <laughs> the uh, so so you know that's that's the help menu. It shows the keyboard shortcuts. Yay. Um, the is also the validate record, and I, I cut this off um, just for the interest of screen space, but this will. Um, validate uh, 6xx headings as well, anything that, that can be validated. Um, in this case, it because um, I was doing this in the test server that does not have a proper authority file, it's like, oh wait, this guy um, is, not, is not valid, obviously. I'm using Concerto here, um, uh, and Christoph Pendreski just, I think, just died in like the last year. He was a very interesting 20th century composer, if any of you are into that kind of thing. I always use him as a Concerto test case because he returns exactly one result. There is a question um, yeah. from CW Mars. Do, can you right click in the 008 and get a menu of codes for that field? Yes. Okay. That I did look at. You can right click in the um, any of like, you know, these and it'll tell you, well, not now. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, not in the presentation, but, but in the actual client. Oh, no. will. Hold on. I just lost my slides, y'all. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Maybe you should have been driving. Ruth. No, I would have done the same thing. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get us back to back to reality here. Were we here? We get super excited and then like no. start clicking things <laughs> everywhere. Hey, let's go check the live. Oh, we're not in the live oh, client. Uh. I know it's the opposite problem of a live demo. You you know, <laughs> right? Instead of inviting the problems with a live demo, you're you invite different problems. Different problems. Anyway. So this shows the validation errors. And then if you click on the validation errors, um, it will give you a link. You can click on um, that authority link there, which will bring up the manage authorities modal where you can either create a new authority or match it to an existing authority. Um, in this case, I would have had to create an authority, but since the demo server, I did not do that. So. And Jennifer Pringle makes a comment, right clicking in one of the characters in the grid will also give you a list, the list you see in the old editor. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, no, I Thank tried you. to right click on my slide and then everything <laughs> right. went haywire. 
<laughs> Darn it, it's not an embedded live demo. My Wait, is this is goals this for next here? year? Yeah. Um, and then um what I referred to earlier was the physical characteristics wizard. Um, this is really uh useful if you want just to it'll step you through the creation of your 007. Um, in this case, uh, there's only one value for the 007 because it's a just a demo record, but it's a sound right. recording. And so as you go through, um, and depending on what you select from each step of the way, it will build your 007 with all of the, you know, relevant values for sound recording. Like, is it is it a disc? Is it tape? You know, what's the speed? You know. Etc. So it'll let you build that based on the initial value in the 007. And this is the physical characteristics wizard has been around for a little bit. Um, but as a former cataloger, I still like super love it. And this is yeah. its new Angular uh, staff catalog version. That was one of those things that was actually, it was developed while I was out in the wilderness. And so I, I came back and I'm like, what? You're know, going right? to build my 007 for me? I know. Because like, let's I face it. I left you. I don't even know. We we all think that Ruth. How can you I know, love this? right? It's just so that I would have more love when I came back. It's true. Anyway, it's true. No, and and building O sevens even like and I was not like an awesome cataloger or a deeply experienced cataloger. It's the kind of thing you have to sit have there to be. That's the thing, right? You have to sit there with you know your definitions in front of you and make sure that you've got them spaced appropriately. This just does it for you, and it works really great. Yes. So this is its fancy new shiny Angular version. And then um, another new thing in the Angular staff catalog uh, was the is is the call number browse. Um, this was another one of those things where it was uh, based on some feedback. There was an earlier iteration of this um, out there in the Angular staff catalog, and then based on community feedback, Bill um, rewrote it to be a sort of simplified version of um, what it what it already is. So he restored the grid format. Um, highlighted where you are. So in this case, I accessed this from the violin concerto number no. three in G, um, Sinfonia Concertante. So that's the highlighted record. And then you can see everything in shelf order that precedes it um, and follows it. So, and then of course, these are all hyperlinked, um, which is great. Um, and then for more highlighting in the search. Um, you know, uh, this is another one that Bill talked about this morning, this afternoon, whatever time has it yeah. anymore. Depends on um, where you are. And in this case, I searched for score and um, it highlighted in my search results, you know, wherever score appeared. So, and so that, that was one of those things that um, there was support for that in the standard catalog. And mm -hmm. now Bill has added that as, um, Right. As yeah. work is being done into this Angular staff catalog. Yeah. And that's a good reminder that these are all things like the shelf browse, the the physical characteristics wizard, the highlighting. These are all things that already existed in the Evergreen catalog, but now they exist in the new Angular staff catalog as well. And, and part of the thing is too, and I think as I was looking at the call number browse, um, that We'll still we'll have the functionality, but it will be um, more efficient. It's going to be more economical for the work that we do in the client, and, and so I, I'm, I'm a great lover of that. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Um, and then this is another feature that existed in um, already in the in the catalog in the staff side catalog, but has now been brought over to the new catalog, which does what it says in the um, hold, uh, in the place hold modal there is now, or excuse me, in the placeholder window, there's now a button to search for patron. It brings up this little modo, modal that you see here and you can search for a patron. So if you don't have um, a patron barcode uh, or card in front of you, you can still pull them up by name. And I, be I believe that he said that that button was there but it was inactive. It was inactive. Yeah. Okay. And, and those of you who are familiar with the patron search, you'll you'll see it's exactly that same screen that you, that you see. It's just in that the modal form that it's now calling that. And then, yeah, no, it's the same. Yeah. And and if you click this down arrow right here under search, it'll actually expand the search fields to be all of the familiar fields from patron search. Yep. So you know address and um, you know 
home library and profile group and all the stuff that you can search on regular regularly in patron search is also available. We're going to three, four next, and I'm excited about that, but I'm really excited about this in three, five. I'm like, can we, can we go do for the that? bleeding edge? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a fan. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, and, and because there's all these new things to do in the Angular staff catalog, there's also um, some new catalog preference, um, pre catalog preference page. So, um, this all used to be kind of buried under the workstation admin setting, um, at least. The uh, first few uh, were, were buried under there. And then this is the staff specific search results per page is also a new preference here that does exist or did the exist OPAC, before. Yeah. But yeah, you as a staff member would have to log into the OPAC to set your search results yep. for the staff search. Now you don't right. have to do that. So now you can set your um, for this specifically for the Angular staff catalog. Um, this is this is actually something that I'm really excited about because in doing training, I'm like, okay, so we need to go to workstation, and you guys are gonna you're gonna select your your catalog view preferences, and then if you want to do your search results, now we're going. To, okay, this is how you're gonna get into my account while you're logged in. But what about your cookies and your all of these things to have these all things really discoverable in one interface, get them set right there, and to be confronted by them on a regular basis as well, because there are times when you want to change those preferences for a right. workflow, it's going to be significantly and now you don't have to, more efficient. Yeah. Now you don't have to dig them up. And now you can, um, I believe that it'll also allow you maintain separate um, results preferences. So now your OPAC results preferences is when you the potential library patron is searching the actual public OPAC. And then I believe that this new one just does the, um, for the staff client. Although I don't know I am, the answer to that, but I would I like to find out. I am wrong about that. Somebody yeah. who knows can just go on and jump into chat and tell me that I'm They're wrong. They're in the sysadmin group right now. Oh gosh, that's right. I know. Well, if there's any, any sysadmins hiding out in this chat, you know, go ahead. And <laughs> let, let me know if I just made that all up. And, and yeah. I will say too, so we covered a few features. I would encourage you that to go back and look at the release notes for mm -hmm. 3.4, which have been published. And as soon as the 3.5 release notes are published in the next few days, I would mm -hmm. say, go and read through that. I, it, it is a wall of text, but there's really important stuff in there that we might not have covered and you may have questions about. So. Oh, that we definitely have not covered, particularly right, a, if you're looking to implement um, any a new optional feature. The, the right. release notes often include information for administrators about here's things that you need to configure and here's things yes. you need to do when you upgrade to make sure this new feature is accessible to you. And they're both considered major releases. So um, there's lots of stuff in them. Yeah. And thank you, Galen, for, oh, he, he has the beta release notes in the oh. chat box there, so. Great. So once the 350 is cut, I will put the um, 350 release notes onto this slide. And this slide and everyone else's slides will be put up on the community webpage as, as is tradition. Um, tradition. So. And the recording will be available on YouTube and If you wanna relive stuff. the Andrea and Ruth show. Yeah, do you have a joke? I don't, I don't really tell jokes, so. Your mama's so classless, she's a Marxist utopia. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> oh, sorry, I wasn't supposed no. to go there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's uh, a great joke, though, man. I'm telling somebody that later. I, you know, I'm yeah. really bad at jokes. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, Debbie. Sorry, jump in. Um, there's somebody with their hand up in the chat. Okay. So, Laura Brzezeski, I'm unmuting you. Laura? Laura's from Evergreen, Indiana. Uh, I did it again. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to just make up a question? <laughs> oh, that's okay. This is okay. great. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Laura. I'll mute you yeah, and put your hand down. <laughs> and I see that Jennifer Pringle, thank you for checking this uh, on the fly, um, <gasps> did a quick Lovely. test and that she said that changing results per page in the catalog, the Angular catalog preference that we just showed, um, does not change them for my account. It's nice so. to have those separated. 
Yeah. So, so we don't have to worry about un well. I don't know I how mean, to we use always have to worry about things. unintended consequences, as like, is evidenced by what's happening right now on your screen. Um, what? That was. <laughs> you know, it was kind of funny. It was pretty funny. Okay. But yeah, so that that right there, the number of search results displayed per page will only mm -hmm. change it in the catalog. And thank you, Jennifer, for testing that on real quick right now. And I guess that does make sense because they are they're separate catalogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, still from the the same bibliographic database, but I was reasonably sure that I was correct about that, but I hadn't specifically yeah. tested it, so I didn't. Yeah, that's fair. Just be like, this is the truth. I don't know. I was just looking at. It. I'm like, oh, they're different catalogs. Of course they would. Yeah, okay. Well. Are there any other any other questions or or comments? Um, or which feature did you like the best? That's hard. No. All of them. We should have constructed a poll. But then we would have really had the Angular Mark editor. I'm really excited to get in there. Galen's and use going that. for the, Galen's going from the cataloger vote. Yes. Are you surprised? Here's here's the review if you guys want to. Our libraries are very excited to start using the new catalog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about the carousels. I mean, I know that they've been out there, but I'm excited for the enhancements because I like pretty things. Oh, Don Dale, love for the holds proximity feature. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, no, that'll be really, I yes. think that'll see some love in a uh, big consortia that want to, you know, uh, well, dial in some hold policies a little tighter there. And there, there's going to be, there are going to be people who are happier that don't even know that they're happier because of that. Yeah, there are some caveats with that whole proximity feature, though, depending on how your other policies are set up, it can actually end up resulting in longer wait times, um, sure. as opposed to the more flexible, um, you know, targeting that that Evergreen right. normally does. So that that is a caveat to be aware of if you implement that, um, that it will likely result in longer wait times. But if you really want to make sure that, like, library A's patrons are getting library A's stuff, that's a way to make that make mm -hmm. that happen. Um, oops, some love for call number browse. I mean, who doesn't love call number browse? I feel like I got to go back to server manage print templates just because like I literally still have my print templates on the thumb drive that is right sitting a foot and to they, my right. It, I will be spending a lot of time with the documentation such as it, it exists and, and more because I think that that's something our consortium is going to be utilizing a oh, lot. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I was able to make the thumb drive, portable thumb drive thing work because I worked for a small system of mm -hmm. three branches and I kind of did all the things. So right. I didn't really have to interact with several levels of consortium. I just went and dumped the receipt templates or emailed them to somebody who I could trust to upload a receipt template file to the but, client. But even if, if you are, and it of course depends on the permission levels and how those, those all pan out in, in your organization, even if you are in a one location system just getting having those available from computer to computer oh yeah and for being able to propagate to floor, yeah propagate something to all your libraries in yes. one step yeah no that's going to be um past andrea would have been like hugely an hour yeah that. forget so. database structure forget all of efficiency for for search calling and things we just want our our receipts to, to be centrally located i mean yeah it's oh, they're all they're <laughs> all good features ruth they're they all good features. they really are so all right and well, i'm really in love with booking so there's that and ruth is really in love with booking is there a way to add a new template or new templates or is there um, so the, the templates that were in those screenshots, those were the ones that Jane had created basically as, um, well, just to have a couple in there so you could look at them. I don't know if there is going to be community development for more receipts, possibly. I mean, it would require community will to do that which I'm sure that there's will, but then also somebody to actually do it. Also the way. Yeah, the will and the way. <laughs> it's um, like a aphorism or something. 
Yeah. Sarah says efficiency for updating receipt templates is not to be under it. No, I'm 100% not underestimating it. Um, will server managed templates get overwritten if something's saved locally? I think it completely, I, my understanding is it completely replaces the local. Yeah, that's my um, understanding as well. Now, templates. your local, depending on, on if your branch level, um, if you're talking about on your machine, I don't know, your machine really isn't a level anymore. Um, but your branch would be, so it would be within there. But you, I guess you could create sublocations. Galen, since you're, you're, Galen is in the chat answering technical questions. Do you um, have, do you know that Galen, if um, they, the server managed templates completely replace anything local or if somebody creates a local template? Like I'm pretty sure that that's just, it's, it's the upgrade yeah. script includes a way to convert the old templates to the server managed templates. There would um, not be workstation dependent templates anymore is my understanding. Mine as well. So can you have different receipts on, you could have different receipts that you used on it, but I think that they would actually be available on different, they would be available on all those machines, but you would somehow have it set to only be using this one on that machine and that one on the other. Yeah. Um, and Galen also made the comment there, there would be coding needed to enable server generated generated templates to be used in more spots. Yeah. So. Yes, this is the beginning, not the end. Okay. So from CW Mars, it's been several yeah. months since testing 3.4, but I believe workstation um, print templates still exist for local ones. They would override server ones from my understanding. Okay. okay. So, you know, we were wrong. So somebody can still mess things up. If they have I'm, permission. I'm like the, the most pessimistic person ever. Nobody ever messes anything up. Just completely ignore that. Somebody would create a receipt with kittens when we would all love it. Yeah, no, I'm looking at a 3-4 system now. And workstation. Template. Yeah, Al Allison said, hopefully they over only override it. Well, you wouldn't be able able to, well, it depends on your permissions. I'm not going to say anything. Lots of things depend on your permissions. And yes, it could be good or bad, depending. Yeah, so there, server, so the local workstation print templates feature is still there. In 3.4. Yeah, or at least the interface is still there, but let's. Let's look up the bug. One, eight, two, five, eight, seven. And you don't you don't have a three five right now. Not on access. no, not okay. alive anymore. I had it for my screenshots and then it was reclaimed. We know who did that, but we're not gonna call Jason Boyer out. No, because he built the test server for know, me, so he kidding. deserves to be called out. I was like, hey, I need screenshots. And he's like, I got Jennifer you. Pringle says local templates are still there in 3.5, at least in 3.5 beta. Okay. Yeah, I think the question Thank is you, whether they will override. Um, override, but not overwrite. Yeah. But you would have to have a level a, a server permission level to overwrite. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not certain. I like <laughs> trying to put a kitten into chat. It could go on a template pretty easily. Oh, I've lost the chat. I don't know where the chat went. Are there any more questions about any of the features or um, there we go. things? There was a comment earlier. <laughs> that, sorry, reading an ass kitty. I, oh I, I apologize Stop for it. saying that out loud <laughs> because ASCII, as you as you actually say it. And anyway, I'm just yes. We are getting up. close to time, and you know we want to give our our poor captioner a break. There was a comment um, earlier about the um, print templates being server managed and the possibility for 
uh, holdings templates to be server managed. So just just a thing to. Um, yeah, I. They don't... are not the same thing, but it, it is. And if there is not a Launchpad bug already, and you should maybe something you want to you want to actually. Uh, submit as a, as a launch pad. Yeah, I couldn't think of one off the top of my head, and I think Taryn remarked that she had not, or label templates, was not aware of one either. Um, I think it depends on the labels because some of those are treated as receipts, um, mm -hmm. depending on how your your printer is. So that's possibly something that would go through there. but I don't know for sure. Yeah. It, dep it depends on how you're using it. All right. Cool. We're at time. Thanks, Debbie. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. Debbie. Karen. That was really exciting and interesting. Yes, and Karen, thank you very much. Um, and thank you everybody for attending. And yeah. This is the end. The end. <laughs> this is, this, this is, is so sad. <laughs> it's our final presentation in our first ever Evergreen International online conference. I'm glad that we are entertaining, Jessica. Ruth and I are pretty entertaining. You should see us in person. I was going to say, you need to actually be at the conference next year. It's going to be fun. Wherever it is. where It's in Missouri, isn't it? Um, yes. When should we expect videos from the conference on YouTube? So YouTube, um, the, the keynote uh, and opening remarks are actually already posted. And um, Ruth and Rogan and I are actually going to be working diligently over the next several days, days to get yeah. videos up, um, which will then be followed by the caption. We'll be adding the caption transcripts to the videos uh, later, but we will be getting full caption transcripts from our awesome captioners. So. So um, very that, soon. Yeah, so the videos the will be up soon and then within like probably another week or so we'll have full captioning up on all of them. But we wanted to get the videos up sooner rather than later. Debbie, so. there's a question about your Funko collection. Um, <laughs> responding. <laughs> yes, they're they're pop okay. Funkos. <laughs> and they're all they're all my strong women. So <laughs> I love it. It was an awesome background. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my computer won't let me have a virtual one so <laughs> you don't need one you have yeah, the best no. background anyway yeah no seriously look at like ruth and i you've got like i got i got the look, 1970s paneling and ruth has you know office. i wrote on my whiteboard though see i can't no i can't see that oh it just says evergreen international online conference I it's did not see even that, <laughs> but look i used a green and red marker anyway. nice. oh just oh. like the logo yeah <laughs> anyway. wait a, wait a Way to be on top of the branding. So on top of the branding. All right. Peace to y'all. Have a great okay. afternoon. Thanks, Thanks everyone, everyone for coming. Take care. Bye.